always get up there, really brightened up when we got Rebecca Higgins did stay with us. And here she is again, the Sunflower Lady. How's things been since the last time we spoke to you? Well, it's always lovely to be with you. Thank you for having me. Things have, have been much as many people's lives, a bit of bumpy, but a difficult, bit of wonderful, bit of joyous. We try and make the most of what we have. Indeed, and you are. You're very positive and you've, you've had some cracking hooks. Just take us on a retrospective of the hooks that you've written so far. Well, I'm thrilled to say my newest book is my fifth book. And uh, my hands have nearly dropped off with work, so I'm going to give them a little bit of a rest. It's nice to actually talk to you. Um, my first book was written several years ago, and that was Like Joy, Your Manual for Resilient Living. And it's small pieces to just help you through each stage of life. It's an easy read, it's a hopeful read, but it also fortifies your courage a bit. Um, my second book was started in the first lockdown because I was writing a daily piece in Mint Business Club to try and cheer up our members who were very, very, very uh, devastated uh, by being self-employed and the, you know, the difficulties and the losses and the, the stresses of that. So I wrote a daily piece and what came from that was I thought, oh, you know, it was this could be a book. And the kind of book that I like to read the most and love to write the most is what's called a devotional, a thought for every day. A good thought for every day to help you through. Just a short reading that you can read before you go to bed, first thing in the morning, whenever you need. And that it would just make you a bit stronger, a bit wiser and a bit happier. So that was your life joy year. Then my third book, Inspiring Ivy, it was about my grandmother, and she is the queen of life joy. And she was courage, love, and absolute backbone itself. And I had taken many years to research and write that book because she had had a very tumultuous life, but her main work had been in China running a mission hospital. And that was not at all uh, what you would think she would ever do because she was the quietest, shyest woman you would ever meet. And yet she had this backbone of steel and goodness and giving. She deserved a book. But actually all the work that she did when she came back from China was equally inspiring. So Inspiring Ivy was a decade long job. And then my fourth book, which came out last year, and my book launches are always on Advent Sunday because Ivy loved Advent. So it's, it's a homage to her. She was my best friend and my greatest supporter. And then my fourth book was Life Joy Journal, an adventure to hope, harmony and happiness. And that was very much an interactive book. And the fifth one is coming and that's Life Joy Year 2, Hopeful Thoughts for Every Day. So, so that's again a reading for every day. So where do you get these readings from? Do, do they come from your head or do you research them? Where, where do they come from? I am a great observer of life. And um, we have had a ton of illness, my parents and myself. And what extremes of life do is it stretches your soul, it stretches your character. And what you try to see is the courage within us, but also the tenacity, the resilience, and also abilities to cope. So I've seen a lot of difficult life and a lot of restriction. So that teaches you how to really savour lovely, normal, ordinary days and just be delighted in everything that everybody else takes for granted. And as soon as you can do that, it's a superpower. So one of the things that I find most useful is to write a theme for the month. So in this book, the first month reading are all about truth. The next month is about trust. It's about contentment. It's about care. It's about courage. It's about wonder. So there's a whole set of readings for every month on one theme but they meander to the next chapter. And the final set of readings in December is about wonder, the wonder of Christmas, what's coming, and actually the wonder that is within you. Now, when you mention the word wonder, do you ever wonder whether the people who buy this particular book read it a day at a time, or do they read it all at once? What do you think? I think that's a wonderful question because I've been so entertained because I am astonished to, and delighted to say that I have readers. I feel like they are my sisters and my mothers and my cousins and my daughters because 
What happens with my books generally is that people buy them for themselves and their best friend, their mom, their daughter. So there's a unity in the reading that I didn't see coming, but really delights me. Several people have told me as if it were a confession, and this really makes me chuckle. Becca, we just go to our birthday and we read what you've done. And that's really difficult because I know a lot of people, a lot of my readers' birthdays, so I've got to be careful you know, to make sure there's something special. So people go for their birthdays. I had other people buy it on Advent Sunday, read it and text me on Christmas Day and say, when's the next one? <laughs> so people, you know, they, they, they read a month at a time. They, they start when they buy it. So sometimes people buy it in February and just read February to February. But I really love it that you can dip in anywhere and I hope there'll be some help for you. Do you think... People, or have you had any feedback from people who've said that this book has helped them through difficult times? Well, thankfully I have, and that's the whole point. When, when you've been as stretched as we have, I've had very severe ME for 20 years, housebound, bedbound, I've had a chronically sick father, and my lovely mum got early onset dementia in her 50s. I'm patron of a mental health charity, Every choice I have made in the last 32 years after glandular fever at 17 has been dominated by health and often the lack of it. So I understand struggle at a very fundamental level. And actually, my work in the previous decade was as a Christian celebrant. So I've taken nearly a thousand loving funeral services. And once you've had all of that together, what it teaches you is to live well, we need to love well. All of the things that people tell me about the books fill my soul because it was almost worth the, it wasn't worth the suffering, but the work that went into it was, you know, very significant. It takes a great deal of effort to write a book, but when it's just inched somebody forward through a difficult day, when it's had a big transformative effect, that's very humbling and very wonderful. But really it's about helping good people keep going. The people who read my books are the people who volunteer, who run the church, who run the brownies, who help in the food bank, who have big loads in their lives, who have chronically sick people they look after, their carers, their mothers, their grandmothers, their aunties, their uncles. They're doing their best for their people. They're activists. They're trying. And if it just gives them a bit of an inch of, an inch of fuel in their, in their tank, then I know I've done something worthwhile. I think we have to find loving purpose from adversity. And my books are most me and I hope most helpful. And do you have an idea about where your books are? Are they all over the world? They are. It amazes me where they get to. And somebody, one, I mean, obviously I'm going to say some have gone to Australia because that's a, that's a good line, isn't it? But they, they have. And one of the amazing things was that people were buying them for their aunties who were nurses like Ivy or for... The bit that really makes me uh, profoundly relieved is that people buy them for people who are in trouble. And I mean, lots of people read them who are happy and have beautiful lives and holidays and hobbies and all the good things in life. It just makes them value them more. But when somebody's struggling and they can just read six lines, half a page, and it helps them through the next difficult hour or the, the difficult decisions in life, or it helps them think wisely so they make good choices and with good consistent choices they get to where they need to be that just fills my soul so i have a lot of northeastern supporters i'm very fortunate but i also have people you know i have a lady in canada who just buys everything before i've even written it so i i feel very fortunate to have the support that i've got i keep working and trying to be worthy of it now if anybody wants a copy of the book how can we get one? Oh, come to me come to me um i have various stockists but you get many more treats if you come to drrebecca.org.uk because I try and give more. You don't just get a book when you come to me. I shall not do a spoiler alert, but I have some beautiful extra treats to go in with the book. And, you know, they come ready to give to somebody as well, which is, I hope, uh, a, a, a job done for people who have Christmas and birthdays to buy for. But also um, my website. And I had several very elderly ladies come to my front window all through the lockdowns tap on the window and say love i've come on the bus i need a book and that was just heart-stoppingly loving and beautiful and worth all the effort so just me 
website please, Facebook group, come and look at us, drrebecca.org.uk, you're always welcome. Now, what sort of music can I play you? Well, this is my, I love this question so much, so I'm going to say what I said last time because it's still profoundly important and maybe it's more important now than it's ever been, especially the state of our world. It's Carol King, I Believe in Humanity. Great track. Dr. Rebecca, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me.